Back again. Welcome into another episode of Dirty Mo Doe. I'm your man Steve Latart. In studio, we have Tampa Tim's from the Producer Palace. We have Travis upstairs. Is this upstairs in studio, Trav? Yep. That didn't look like the mountains. Are you cheating on the mountains? What was that? They're mountains. Oh, they're the mountains. Your camera's so blurry, I can't even tell. And look at the face on this one, the professor. Welcome to the welcome to the show, professor. How are you, sir? Good, buddy. How are you? Didn't lose any bets last week, so I've, I'm in a good mood. I'm telling you, though, only because you didn't make any. <laughs> uh, let's go back to Pocono. It looked like there was a chance for Alex Bowman to go back to back. He was second late. In the end, it was Ryan Blaney. Um, before we get into some... What's that? R- Russ trying to finagle his way out of the Bowman bet last week was complete bullshit. Let me tell you, all that's doing, every time he does a bull <laughs> thing like that, I just make the order bigger. Oh, if Bowman, win, okay. if Bowman wins again, I shouldn't have to pay. <laughs> uh, that's how it works, Sam. But you've heard the order, right? And every time he comes up with a, a stupid statement like that, I'm like, yeah, we will have some mozzarella sticks. Yeah, yeah another you know side gets we added. Will yeah, we I'm, will not, extra side. I'm not worried about you ordering mozzarella sticks. That's the least of my worries of you ordering stuff. Actually, this is what happens. I go five lines further down on the wine list. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. Say, that. <laughs> Let me go down here. That's what, what is I'm this, Argentina? About. I'll try that. I'll tell you right now. A 2001? My goodness. Ooh. <laughs> you never know when you go, you know what? Let's have one of those for the bar tab, too. Just give it to the bartender. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, let's, let's hear about it, though, Tim's. Did we make any money on Blake? First of all, did you survive the weekend? Because you were unconscious the weekend before. So were you back with us all weekend? Uh, I was. I was. I was in New York, so I was visiting some family. Uh, but... Uh, I didn't have a great week. I, there's a couple hits. Bubba top 10, Byron top 5, track house over RCR. Thank you, Daniel Suarez. Um, but, but but we end up losing money on the weekend, so we, we're, we're trying we to write the ship. Qualifying, were you on our qualifying bad beat? <laughs> I was not, no. I stayed away. I was. Okay, so the bet was this. And it was my, my – I was pushing it for sure. It was McDowell over Cindric, And I'm like, for sure, lock. Then we get a double whammy, and I'm like, oh, he's even in the second group, which means he qualifies on the inside row. So I'm like, that's better, too. That's hedging the right way. I'm like, spectacular, great. First group runs. It's Cindric. I'm going to have to give oh, awesome credit. He runs a decent lap. You know, not spectacular, but decent. Has me a little nervous. Then McDowell goes in his group. And make a long story short, he ties. Well, the result was a loser because he started next to no, that's a lot. He started one row behind Austin Sindrick on the inside. So one position behind. But the kick in the shorts was he tied. Tied Ross Chastain in qualifying to the 1,000s. If he could have picked up one 1,000s, it would have been a winner. The format is bull****. I'm just going to say that right now. I Thank mean, you, Thank what you. the f*** are we doing? Like, if you look at it, the, like... Just from, like, if you never watch or know what's going on, like, McDowell is faster than whatever, Cindric, but he's a spot behind him. That makes no sense to, the, to a regular person. It just makes no sense. I would like to bring you to a few of my meetings, Tampa Tims, because I believe you bring up a very valuable point that uh, yeah. been, that's been brought up before. So here's why they do it. They do it because the competitors feel like they want to qualify against each other in their group, and that's all fine and all, but it's complicated as can be for the average fan. So so calm. I I I've, I've watched for 25 years and I I didn't get it. I I caught myself wondering why the f- is McDowell behind him if I'm telling you. Yeah. It was a bad beat though. Call me up. I'm going to the meetings. It was my only loss that I had on the weekend in NASCAR. This was my best week to date. I had well, Go the, ahead. Flex a little. Let's hear it. I had didn't the track house. You're betting. The, 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 hold on. I did. Track house over RCR, which was the group bet. Uh and then when I saw that Kyle Busch was having car issues, I then went and fired off Bubba Wallace over Kyle Busch. And then I boosted Denny Hamlin top Toyota. Those were all public bets that you could have seen, Tim. Don't want to hear I it. I couldn't have. You, I they were there. I, seen it. I have a question. Did, did you live bet Bubba over Busch, or was this after his qualifying or practice? No, it, it was right before the race when they were working on the car that had the leak. And so oh, I was nice. like, at worst, if he doesn't, if he can't make, he doesn't race. I'm guessing they void it. But there's a chance that he gets out there and there's issues. I was like, let's. 
I was about to say, are they, are they putting out live bet matchups? Because that would be sweet. No live bets, Ooh. but it was, it was pre-race. Okay. Oh, he had an oil leak. He went to the back. He got to the front. He went to the back. He got to the front. Then he got Corey LeJoyed. End of day. Basically right there. Is that, I mean, is that, how was that summary, Professor? Was that pretty good? He got Corey LeJoyed, yeah. yeah. They were having problems all day, though. They had brake issues. They had oil line issues. The poor guy. Then they, had rear bump, then they had rear bumper issues. Apparently, it was too firm because when Corey ran over it, it spun him out. I will say, though, looking back at Pocono, if you would have bet all my top 10, you would have made money because I had eight in the top 10 in the predictor. Who did you not have? And here's, here's the ones. Kyle Larson, who we thought would have been in the top 10. Like, that would have been a lock. He was 13th. And then Ty Gibbs, who... You know, wouldn't have been was running great and then blew an engine. So, so you would have said, I don't think you would have made money to be well. I don't think you would have made money because Larson would have been like a minus eight hundred loser. I'm not trying to be a jerk. I mean, eight and two is a really good thing, but welcome to the odds. If you miss on Kyle Larson, he had to be minus. I don't know. You tra- Trav would have to look it up. I bet he was a minus five or six, seven hundred for a top ten. It's it. Dale asked me the same thing on Tuesday, and I said the same thing. I don't. I think you would have. Lost have been pretty close to breaking even. I don't know if he would have made money. Now, 8 out of 10 is still an impressive run, Professor. We're not trying to knock that. No, But no. You, we don't want you to push the gamblers to betting your entire top 10. I actually think you'd be better off to bet, like, your 6th to 10th place finishers because those were closer to even money. Um, Larson was minus a heavy six, favorites. Larson was minus 600. And well, Gibbs, and and Gibbs was, was minus um, 170. Well, so you're basically minus seven seventy. So you're you're not making money. You're making yeah. thirty bucks because the other ones were probably all minus money, right? Nobody in the top ten was plus money. I think Bowman might have been pre raised but Bowman, you could Did get the most sad look at the professor's face. That's what it looks like every time you learn how gambling works. <laughs> Now, what you should have led with was we, the predictor went eight and two in the top ten. That would have been a better lead. Yeah. The, the predictor eight and two in the top ten. How about that? I like that. That's good. Clip it, Trav. Clip it. Clip it. I'll edit that uh, out for you, fans, Russ. Trav, we got anybody on social that loved the picks? Uh, Andrew Stalker, Bubba top ten, and Alex Bowman top ten, both cashed, and then David Light was uh, carrying a Ryan Blaney outright winner bet. Good for him. One dollar turned into thirteen. Love it. I love it. I love it. Love a winner. Uh, can we put the triangle behind us and go to the rectangle? Please. <laughs> Let's do it. From Pocono to the Brickyard, back on the Oval. I can't wait. I'm so fired up to be going back to the Oval. Um, I don't know. I like the history. I love the race. I love. I just. I just think it's a better. Uh, better option for the sport to do the, the Oval. Also, it's going to put the uh, predictor in a little bit more of a funk. So go ahead, produ- uh, Professor. Hold on. I'm messing with my computer. All right, Professor, let's give this to the fans. Uh-oh. Hold on. I'm explaining it now. I know. Trav's all worried that we have all these new listeners, and they have no idea who the polished bald man is in the lower right corner. So I'm going to let, lay it out. So the Professor is the stat man. He's got more stats than anybody knows. These are all public stats. He uses, like, finishing position and some other things like that and he builds an algorithm and that mathematical equation then gives a score and the score then gives our predictor give us a little bit of the ingredients in the predictor you don't have to give us a secret sauce but what goes into it professor so like recent performance during the season recent performance at the track we're coming up to recent performance at the track type we call it but it's other related um other related tracks and then we also look at um pit crew times and we look at um their speed at certain tracks um all that all that really good stuff that that you think is uh goes into that russ so i have a we qu- jump? oh go I ahead have, i have a question we're going to a, a track that the next gen car has never been at and a probably a good amount of this field has never raced at how does ten. that 10 of them have never run on the oval how, how does that change things did that make it a little difficult this week this this is honestly this is this was probably the hardest week like this is even harder than going to like Iowa in my opinion because th- this track is so different than any others right like Stevie I asked Stevie this week what we should compare it to and you ready for this it was Pocono and Phoenix 
And I about fell out of my chair when he said Phoenix, and I'm like, okay, he said Phoenix. I'll agree with, I'll go along with it. So I could blame him this week. And then um, what happened so, on the download? Because I didn't even talk to Dale before this. <laughs> so okay, so so no, you no, look no, at no, that. No, but then we, go ahead. Come on, Dale. Yeah, so so 2021. Da- so yeah, Dale asked me. Well, he I. He basically said Phoenix because I missed Blaney last week at Pocono, and he said Phoenix for this week would be a good comparison too. And I kind of was like, well, Phoenix, what the heck? So then I texted you guys, why Phoenix? So you got to explain to me, why is Phoenix close to Pocono and Indy? All right, so first of all, to your point, Professor and Travis, Indy is definitely its own animal. But let's talk about Indy in general. It's, there's a few things that go into track comparison. Size, speed, banking, but one that people don't talk about is asphalt or normalized roughness, like how bumpy a track is. So Phoenix and Indianapolis have very, very similar surfaces. They're both relatively smooth. One and two of Phoenix is a really, like if you look at car data, lateral G, vertical load, all the things that a, set, a crew chief would look at, one and two at Phoenix is very similar to kind of what you would do in Indy. It's, it's the same speed type corner. Um, I'd like to put New Hampshire in it, but it's a little bumpy, and I don't think it really is exactly the same. Pocono is actually very hard because turn one is such an outlier. Turn three is a lot like Indianapolis. I would actually say if I had to have a third track to really blow everybody's mind, I'd put Michigan in there Um, because it's just such a smooth asphalt racetrack with so much total speed. I think you're very similar on setup concept. Maybe not the same setup, but at least the same concept. Mm Mm-hmm. This is, how I'd, this is how I'd say it, Tampa. Like, if you were handicapping a football game and you're playing against somebody who is a super run offense, and even though they may be a completely different team, and then five weeks later you, you have that same group and you're like, Mel, remember again, their defense against that last run offense was really good. So we're going against another run-heavy offense, so I think it's going to be a low-scoring game. It's kind of the same sort of hopscotch we're trying to make between Phoenix and Indy. Yeah, I think even looking at the predictor for this week, seeing I, it makes me believe okay i kind of get the comparison now the guys who run well at phoenix are kind of at the top here that's a good point like did the predictor surprise you let's talk about that it doesn't right i mean I not think after i heard the phoenix was a comparison no so let's hear it professor that's a lot of lead up for your damn predictor we've never had this much build up so whoo tier one denny hamlin william byron ryan blaney tyler reddick christopher bell and chase elliott no larson in the top tier this week which is not surprising, but I will say this. I actually think Chase Elliott might have had the best car in Pocono. We never got to see it, but every time I w- was watching the timing and scoring, he was making the most moves through the field. So Hamlin, Byron, Blaney, Reddick, Bell, Elliott. Throw a blanket over him. Tier two. Kyle Larson, Brad Kozlowski, Joey Logano, Truex, Chastain, Busher, and Bubba. I think that's a little disrespectful to Alex Bowman back there, but okay. What about Larson? Well, he's really at the hinge. He's the best tier two driver. So he's second in Vegas and all alone. Yeah. yeah. I think that's Kyle Larson effect. I don't think that's track performance personally. Do you think Kyle I- Larson has reached that level of respect from fans and stuff in the books where they're – they're treating him like a Chase Elliott. And- well, plus, remember, he ran the Indy 500. So going back to Indy, why that has nothing to do with one another. A casual race fan might just hear the name in the track and drive a little bit of action. I mean, we'll hypothetically say that I have made worse bets on other sports, not really knowing the facts. <laughs> oh, I well, do it and- every day. Soccer. And when you look at Larson, like his performance at Indy was not good there before. He didn't race there in 2020, so we have no data there. Um, his last top five there was 2016. You look at Phoenix this year, he was 14th. His last five races, he only has one top five. So when you put all that together, that's why he drops down. Why don't you just go to tier three so we can get all the big names we want in? <laughs> Here's your guys. Alex Bowman, Daniel Suarez, Kyle Busch, McDowell, Ty Gibbs, and Josh Berry. And for some of these guys, we don't have any track data, right? So that's right. So they just they they miss out, like truly, like I have to put some some of the team score in there 
to help prop them up. But but overall, that's where you're you're getting crushed at. So I thought Pocono was going to be a Toyota weekend. It didn't let me down with overall pace, right? I mean, Denny was good. But I'm going to tell you, I don't think it was a manufacturer weekend. I mean, Blaney obviously was good enough. But when I go back and even look at practice, I had some bow ties good. I had some Toyotas good. I had some Fords good. So I am going to assume the same in Indianapolis. Kyle Busch did the tire test there, only ran a few laps and had an accident. Who else tested? Uh, Todd Gilliland. Denny tested, but when... When asked about it on his on actions detrimental, he said that any advantage that you would have from the testing is going to be negated with the fifty minute practice con- con- compared to if you had like twenty minutes. What do you make of that? I think that's fair. I think that you know if it was a short twenty minute practice, having that extra tack time is a bigger advantage. I think he is right with the fifty minute practice. You can kind of do whatever you want to the car. That's probably going to take away some of the advantage. I don't, I don't think its assessment is inaccurate there. It's still an advantage to have tested, but, but not as big of an advantage as some of these other places where we've seen limited track time. So let's jump right into it. What do you got, Tampa? Man, I got I got I to gotta lean here. We're going back to Indianapolis. You know Penske's going to bring some rockets to the track. And you look at Ryan Blaney, he's very good at Phoenix. He's very good at Pocono, obviously, winning last week. And at plus 1,000, I love that. There's some books that are offering plus 750. So there's some there's some value on this one book, FanDuel, uh, to get it. And Tyler Reddick's my other good one at, at 13-1. to 1. I, think he's, he's, I think he's the hottest driver right now, last five races, best average finish. Um, I, think he's, I think he's got to come through eventually. He's running so well. And there's a lot of pressure, I think, for him to come through and win one of these that he's running well at. I think this could be an option. He's only run, I think, once here, Professor, on the Oval. So I don't know how much of that can play into it. But I really do like him this week. I like him this week. He made he made um, Tier 1 for, for the first time in a while. No, I agree with both of those. Um, I think the value, though, I'll be honest, I think the value, and I hate to even say this because it's going to just bite me right in the face, but, I mean, I think Ross Chastain is a solid Tier 2 driver. We haven't seen, you know, winning speed at a track house, but, look, I didn't see winning speed last year when he won Nashville. I didn't have him winning Phoenix in the fall. Like, this isn't a team that kind of, like, you know, meanders their way to the front. I don't wouldn't like him at twenty to one, but man, you can get Chastain at thirty seven to one, Bubba at thirty four, and Bowman at thirty four. Those are just surprisingly long odds for guys that I think have a legitimate shot to win this race. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't think they're going to be the best cars. That's why the uh, predictor has what you have, Professor. But we've seen bigger upsets. I see you got some top five interests this week, Tampa. I do. I like top fives a lot better than top tens this week. I think they there's... killed the tens, right? Killed them. Yeah, they, there's there's really nobody of worth value really there in top ten. So top fives, I mean, you got Christopher Bell plus one seventy, William Byron plus one fifty five. I like. I even like Blaney at plus one twenty five and Logano plus two hundred. It's really just guys that if they're gonna run top ten, I think they can definitely run the top five. I mean, I'm willing to take that risk for that plus money. How about these uh, team race matchups? You guys loved the RCR Trackhouse last week. Now we got Trackhouse against SHR. Let's hear it, Tampa. Right back to it. Right back to it. I mean, I'm looking at the predictor. Chastain's, what, 11th, Suarez is 15th, and all four SHR guys are below him. And I don't, I don't see where that speed's coming from now. As we're going into the Olympic break, I, don't, ugh. I think it's going to be a straight downfall. Give me the pick em again with Trackhouse. I don't care that it's four versus two. Yeah, four versus two is very interesting to me. It is four versus two is interesting. That's the only hesitation I have because the raw speed, Tampa, you're dead on. I, I'm the only guy I'd be worried about is Ronnie Childers and Josh Berry. I mean, maybe Briscoe, but Berry they could they qualified well at Pocono. They were kind of up there for a little bit. Like that would worry me. But like you said, Steve Chastain's you know got some good value on him. He can run pretty well. He's right there in the predictor. I don't know. Back to back weeks of track house looks pretty good. All right, all right. Colleg and Rick Ware. How about this next one, though? This is like Hendrick's G- house. JGR versus HMS? Oh, yeah. I would take plus HMS money. plus money. HMS plus money. Andy, you know who's driving the pace car? 
Mr. H. Mr. H. I'm taking Hendrick plus money. This should be even a heads up. The fact that you get plus money for Hendrick anywhere, it's the value bet. Mm -hmm. um, front row Inspire. Man, I'm, I'm too scared of Josevar. He's got some firepower. That kid runs up front. Hasn't finished there lately, but he's got a lot of speed. Truex versus Bell, Blaney versus Kez. None of the matchups really entice me. You have an Elliott Reddick one highlighted. I like Reddick just way over Chase this week. It's Hendrick's house. I get that, but I, I'm just so high on Reddick. I'll take the minus 110. I'll take it. I'd take the other side of that for a cold beer. There's no way I think that happens. Really? I'll, I'll bet that. All right. Write it down, Trav. Frosty one on Tim's next week. <laughs> oh. No, can I up? I'd like to change the, the beverage of choice to a frosé. Ooh. Ooh, yes. Fact. Yes. Here's what we're doing. We're taking a pod trip to the co-op. Isn't that what it's called, or is it coop? Co-op. It could be the coop after a couple of those uh, frosés. It's co-op, right? It's supposed to be co-op. <laughs> it's it's co-op, yeah. Co-op frosé. Co-op frosé. Loser has to buy the round, and I'm going to tell you, it's magical. <laughs> I don't even mind paying for it. That's how good I it agree. Tastes. <laughs> It'd be the best bet to lose ever. Yeah, I'm just so in. Great. Write it down. Chase, uh, uh, we don't even talk time. groups, and there isn't Hold even on. a group that entices me. Yeah. Can we go okay. back to top? Can we go back to top ten? Ooh, you're winding way back. Sure. Uh, Tim's. I see you have two highlights. They're both donations, okay. but I love it. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, I mean. I hate to be that way, but they're both donations. But I'm super interested to hear your sales pitch. Look, I mean, they're not going to make my card, let me tell you. But Kyle Busch, if you look at the oval, oval stats, and Professor, back me up here. Oh, I'm with you. He's, he's great here. Now, he's teammates to Austin Dillon, and Ty Dillon's in the field this week. So I'm not sure how much firepower is going to be under that hood. But... I mean, plus 130 ain't great. They'll probably qualify. You can probably get a better number. He'd be the only guy I'd, I'd probably take a risk on just because he's so good here. He's not no. wrong, Stevie. He's not wrong. I did my he's not until Sunday me. afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> we skipped right over Jimmy Johnson. Like, we skipped right over Jimmy Johnson. Do we have to just admit that it's the recent numbers and Legacy's recent numbers? Now, I'm going to be I'm gonna be the first guy to raise my hand that if he was in like a fourth Hendrick car or a fifth Hendrick car or a fifth Gibbs car. I know he's a Toyota guy now, so a fifth Gibbs car. But, man, like Legacy just hasn't shown me a whole lot either. So, you know, I don't see a, a part-time guy getting in there. So let me ask you this. There's 10 drivers that have never raced there. He's got a lot of experience. Is, is there anything that he can ha gain an advantage is, I think the car change is more of a disadvantage than knowing because the track that he knows isn't the track they're running. I mean, it's the same pavement, but the car changes how you're going to drive it more than anything, and I think that's the disadvantage he's going to have. He almost has to unlearn some bad habits that these other guys, have just they, they don't know them. They only know this car. Um, winning team. I see it, Tampa. I mean, you can't tell me that Roger Penske ain't going to bring some hot rods this week. I think... Now, I also think, like, compared to the number plus 550, I think that's a great number compared to HMS and JGR. It's enough to, like, even take the conspiracy theory they're going to have a rocket at Indianapolis aside. Like, I think that's a great number for that team that definitely could do it. They have, I think they got two really good chances with Joey and, and Ryan. Let me ask you this, Tim. So you're, you're high on Penske this weekend. I know you don't like to do the – put a couple but Blaney is plus 200 and Logano's 400 for top Ford no I love don't it don't like it don't like he, it he, my thing I'm not hates, doing it he hates when you're like spreading it and you're like I'll break even with this driver I'll make money with that he he does not do those bets no I can and appreciate that some people could probably argue I probably should and they'll probably make more money but I don't know it's a lot it's a lot of thinking to make nothing in my opinion and I don't like to think that hard so I like a man that knows his wheelhouse. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. There's so much to um, bet. I, I stay out of it. Let's jump right over to finishing position because those are always the one. Where did where did where did Truex finish, by the way? Eighth. Whoop. 
Where did Reddick finish? <laughs> oh, Reddick was sixth. So that wouldn't have paid. Two uh, overs. Keep going. Bu- Bubba would have paid. Stenhouse would have paid over. Stenhouse, we would have lost. Uh, and McDowell, we avoided. So you would have broke it even. Yeah, you heard your little um, Eric Jones nod last week right i loved it we had a fan tweet at us about it too we had, we had a few yeah yeah what's the nod gonna be this week kyle larson over seven and a half well let's talk about these you have suarez as an under no no one no one highlighted anything no no i'm yeah. saying the predictor yeah oh And then it has Larson right at that number. And then 23 and a half for Stenhouse. These are good numbers this week. Now, listen, there's 40 cars in the field. Mm-hmm. So that moves those numbers around. Not, I mean, not a lot, but it's still, I'm just, you know, there are 40 cars just to, be, just to make sure everybody understands. These are some hard ones. I mean... I don't. I don't have an opinion on them, Professor. What do you think? Uh, I. I would. Yeah, that Larson one's right on it. I don't like that one. I would say the the Stenhouse over. I'm sorry to say that, but I would say that one. And you're looking for a ride as, home. Yeah, I'm not going this week. So. No, <laughs> you up? son of a. Oh yeah, you guys know that, right? Russ is taking the weekend off. My first one. Professor's just skipping. Just not well, hold on. A, hold on a second, not Steve. True. What were you? What were you doing for the first half of the season? I didn't see you at the races. What and I'm going about? truck racing too. Just so you know. Uh, speaking of Indy, Steve, are we uh, cocktail shrimp on the? Uh... Oh, Friday night. Friday night. As soon as I heard Professor wasn't coming, I made a reservation. <laughs> I'm taking the two other racing insights guys. Professor won't ever buy him a decent meal, so we're going to take them to. To uh, them, I'm going to load it up on wine and then convince them that they should buy the bill. Charge it to Russ's <laughs> expense account. Good old St. Elmo's. Yep. The real reason you had to make the reservation is because I wasn't going is because I normally make the reservations. That's true. There's no argument there. So Shout out to the, to the Frog House Chop House. Oh, the Frog House Chop House. This uh, little house we found, well, we didn't find, Professor found in Pocono. I'm telling you, spectacular night. We even had a uh, surprise guest. Mm-hmm. Old Jet Set and Chopper came up for the weekend. <laughs> Ooh. Yep. Uh, I have some bets that were just added. They're still not in the Excel sheet. Total number of Toyotas in the top 10 over under is three and a half. What's the oh, uh, price? Minus 120 for the under, 110 for the over. The under's the bet. Fords, again, three and a half. Uh, under is heavy, minus 145. Over is plus 115. Under again. Well, then I, do we even need to ask what Chevy's so, is? Do you think it's a Chevy? The number, well, hold on. Before you ask, the, the Chevy number is going to have to be four and a half. It's not. It's three and a half at minus 115. Over. So under, under, over. That's where I'm at in life. But would you pay... The Ford at minus 145. No. No chance. No, especially with how much I lost at the Pocono Casino. We didn't even talk about that. <laughs> I felt like Chevy Chase, Las Vegas vacation. I was playing rock, paper, scissors, <laughs> pick a hand. I mean, number between 1 and 10. I lost on all of them. That, that's because of your luck there last year. Well, yeah, well. It's karma. I'm I'm just going to tell you, I just don't feel it this weekend. I don't know. I'm excited for racing at the Brickyard, but I just don't know what to make of it, and I don't know what to think. I think Denny Hamlin is the winner. I think this is the crown jewel he's missing. He has yet to win at the Brickyard. I know he doesn't have a championship. I think Denny Hamlin is your bet, even at basically 5-1 to win. I think you have to have him on your sheet. I mean, I don't know any other way around it. Um, I wouldn't bet anyone else. I wouldn't bet Larson, Blaney, Kez, Elliott, Byron. You got to bet Byron. You got to bet Byron. 
No, I'm saying, hold on. Let me finish my thought. I'm not betting any of these guys until practice. Okay. I think you take Hamlin now, 500, because I think he's going to be – actually, you could wait because Hamlin always drags ass in practice, and so you might actually get longer odds after his practice because he's not going to look up look great. Um, but I would take, if you are so inclined, Chastain, Bush, Bowman, Bubba, Gibbs – any of those guys, I would take pre-practice because they could have a chance to be really good in practice. Everybody up inside the top ten, man, I don't know. I'd wait to see how they drive, how they run. Truex is the interesting one. I don't know. Something. This would be a good one for him. What about Xfinity? He's not very good here, though. Let's do that. Let's go to somewhere we can try to. So Xfinity's very, very interesting. You're this not gonna let me get my Byron stat in. I think this is Byron's week. Oh, all the twenty fours. Yeah, the twenty fours won every four. Every 10 years. 36 one in 94, one in 2004, one in 2014, and now it's going to win in 2024. For the, is it a certain moon that has to be out too? Wax and gibbous or something? Yeah, waiting crescent actually. Waiting crescent. <laughs> All right, there you have it. So the professor says that. Well, then, then I would take Hamlin and Byron. I like those two. I, I could get behind those two. If I only had those two sitting on my card, I think you're going to have – even if you lose, I bet you have a buyout option for plus money at some point during the day. Yeah. I think, I think my best – my favorite bet on the board is Byron Top Chevy plus 300. And I don't Ooh. play around with those a lot. I love that I bet, love – lo- we skipped right over that, but you were right. I love that. I yeah. think that's right. I mean, if you look at the predictor, he's second, and the next guy. There's only two Chevys in in number one, and that or in the first group, and that's Byron and Elliott. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't know how you're getting to your over over three and a half Chevys. I feel that they are going to team their way in. I think you're going to have f- at least four Chevys in the top ten. Who are well, they? Cl- well, clearly, but who? <laughs> We know you're saying you, up. We know you're going to pick four. You took I, over three and a half. 24. I think all four Hendrick cars are going to make the top 10. Okay. Well, I wish that was a bet. I wonder if you can parlay that. Let's talk Xfinity while he's checking the math. So Xfinity has downforce arrow with restrictor plate engines. Hmm. That so that's what they run in Atlanta. So it's really hard to figure this one out. We got Hill, Custer, All Guy, or Love. I'm a little surprised there's not more Cup guys in it. Is there any yeah. restriction, Russ? Is it like some sort of extra money race or something where they can't run? I don't know. That's a good question. I don't. I don't know that because there's there's not right. There's not any. Not that I'm aware of. I have your uh, your all Hendrick top ten, and I don't think it's that great. It's plus three eighty six. No, I don't like that. Um, Hill, big favorite. That's surprising to me. If it's like Atlanta, is that why is that surprising? Because it's, it's you know when I say it's like Atlanta, it's the same rules, but they're going to be out of the gas in one and three. It's not going to be like Atlanta where they run wide open around here. Um, I wonder if that's what's got the books tipped. I wonder if they think it's the rules thing. I just don't see that. So who do you like then? Well, I think Custer and Augar will be good, but uh, you know, I mean, listen, I like Almarola. I like Almarola. I think. Really? Yeah, I mean, if you look at everybody who's run the Oval, and look at how many laps he has at the Oval versus everyone else. And now, unlike the Xfinity, or unlike the Cup car, which is next-gen, this is the Xfinity car that we've run since the beginning of time. I know the power is different, but but I like Al Marola, 12-1. to 1. I mean, he's a Cup winner. I know he hasn't been in a car in a while. He's going to get 50 minutes of practice. I think that number's going to disappear. I think it's going to be like 5-1 to 1 by the time the race starts. Would you take him top five? I would. I actually don't hate the top fives because you can get plus money. Like, I would take Al Marola. What's that? I'm sorry. There's a lot of good top five numbers. Yeah. So who is in the JGR cars? It's Al Marola. Yeah. 
That's yeah. Chandler that's, Smith is one I baffled why he's sixteen to one. And then Joe Graff Jr. Joe Graff Jr. and who was the third? I'm sorry. Chandler. Man, that's like a slap in the face to Chandler. Sixteen to one. Mm-hmm. Two hundred for a top ten or top five. What about Chandler versus Riley Herps? Um. Man, you would think that would be Chandler. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. I, I tell you the other one that's you can don't laugh at me, but I think Creed at fifteen to one. I mean, that'd be a hell of a place to get your victory, right? Ty Dillon did it. Well, oh boy, <laughs> Jesus! I'm just saying, that's a factual statement. Ty Dillon's one career win in the Xfinity Series came in Indianapolis. He had a hell of a burnout too. I'm just like Creed, fifteen to one. I mean, at plus plus one ninety for a top five. Like I think. Oh, I mean, let's be honest. You just take the 400 for the top three because if he doesn't win, it's going to be a second. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> no, I'm kidding, but. You're not, though. You're, that's tr- not, it's kind of true, isn't I it? I actually like the, the, the matchups. Kligerman and Sammy Smith is an amazing matchup. It is. Like, on paper, that should be Sammy Smith forever and a day driving a JRM car versus a, the 48 Xfinity car. Like it shouldn't even be a conversation. Is that right, Professor? I mean, I, I, I would agree on, on paper, but I, I, would, I would lean towards Parker. They've been running really well. They have. They have Dinger and Creed. I think Dinger, like Almond Dinger, I think I mean like excuse me, like Almarola, Dinger has got a lot of laps here. I think I think it's gonna make him you know, it's gonna help. But that's Colleg versus JGR. Are you That's why I like the Creed with less juice. Does the rules package change your thinking there? What's that, buddy? Does the rules package change your thinking there? Like, well, I, I, I like Creed, and here's why. I, I mean, I'm sorry. I like Hill and Jesse Love, and here's why. They, they're super fast at the speedway, so let me just assume it's power. What's weird, though, is there's a lot of guys that run RCR engines. So I don't know if they get some magical special in-house stuff, or maybe that's going to help the 48, or maybe it isn't power at all, and maybe they have a car thing figured out, because qualifying, they are unbelievable. Um, and it's way more than just power. It can be all the details. The rules have me a little question here. Just, just real quick. Just bet Heim and Eckes in trucks. That's it. They're at uh, Raceway Park, the little track down the street. Heim and Eckes. Can we get some odds on those guys? Let me see if they're out. They haven't been out all day. And professor says Heim and Eckes. They're not. But Paint the town. If Professor says it for that, then that's all you need to know. I love it. I've oh, down. I blindly follow the professor's truck advice. I mean, I can't bet it, but I would if I was a wagerer. And then a long shot would be um, Ty Majeski. Oh, what's he? He runs so good at the short tracks. Yeah, he won this last year. All right, is that it? Because I got important stuff out there. I got to get over to the grill. I'm on a I'm on a ribs recipe per the professor. We got one last thing. Yes. Tim's is bet of the week. Oh, Tim's oh. bet of the week. My bet of the week is got to be uh, William Byron top Chevy plus three hundred. I love it. I love it. I, I can get behind that. Yeah, I can get behind that. I'd put a little hidden Chase Elliott to win bet just in case. But all right, Tampa Tim's bet of the week. There you have it, guys. NASCAR returns to the Brickyard. We have Xfinity and Cup at the big track on the Oval. We have trucks down the road at Raceway Park on the little track. And we got the golfers across the pond. It's the open, a little golf and coffee, and then a little racing with the mountains. When Trav opens the, I'm assuming you're not going to drink during golf, Trav. I mean, we'll take that as a we'll take that as a we're unsure. Yeah, we'll see. All right, we'll get all your bets in and may all your bets pay off.